Good evening, Mr. Doucette. This is Marissa Ponti broadcasting live from the scenic Milner Library. So today for my fourth clinical reflection, I was super excited because in this past two-week span, I did my teaching demo, or yeah, the three-day lesson. So for my three-day lesson, I will, my students are reading To Kill a Mockingbird, which I think I mentioned that when I was talking in my other reflection about co-planning and stuff like that. So it's really interesting. It's been an interesting experience for me. Number one, not reading the book until I'm having to teach it. So that's been fun to deal with. But I really like it. It's been a good time. So some of the big things for my three-day lesson that I'd like to talk about are, I don't know, I feel like in general, it went over pretty well. Um, the first day was cool. Like, it was interesting to see how the kids reacted to me. And that was interesting. Um, I think it was in my second hour, two kids got kicked out, which was the first class that I taught. Two kids got kicked out on the first day because they were about to get into a fight, which, talk about, you know, trial by fire. That was interesting to deal with, but... My CT and co-teacher were really great, helped me out. They, like, you know, were right there for me in situations like that. So that was really nice. Um, so for my lesson the first day, I had the kids start out with a quick write. And then we talked about characterization, like indirect, indirect characterization. Then, oh, what did I have them do? I had them... I think actually, yeah, the first day, all I did was the PowerPoint, went through that. Then I had them go through the, yeah, I did the PowerPoint, sorry. I'm a little bit scatterbrained. Um, we did the PowerPoint the first day, then we went and read some more. This was actually one of the interesting things I thought, and I talked about this already in the last time reflection, but trying to navigate the lessons that I had planned, I had planned to get through indirect to indirect characterization and the different types of characters, like protagonist, antagonist, foil, all that stuff, in my three-day lesson. But my co-teacher, or my teacher and co-teacher were like, hey, you should probably just do one, the direct and indirect, so that way we have time to read in class because the kids can't, can't take the books home. So that was really interesting to deal with and to navigate. So the first day, just did the PowerPoint, and then we read in class together. Um, and I mean, the kids were kind of, it was interesting with a PowerPoint. They very much wanted to know what exactly to write down. And I found the PowerPoint took a lot longer because I was unsure. I thought it would be pretty quick and easy but it takes a lot longer than I had expected for the kids to actually copy everything down. And they're very specific. They want to know everything to write down. And they'll write down slides word for word, which that's something I don't really like. But I think a good way to kind of combat that would be to do guided notes. But it is kind of funny because at manual, we're pretty strict about our copies. So each teacher only gets a couple copies per semester, which is kind of, that's kind of funny. So they're very stingy about what they copy. Those usually go to tests or to worksheets that are like integral. So that was interesting. Um, then my second day, I had them do a worksheet, which was really cool. I found out that their like retention for the worksheet was really good. They remembered what the difference between direct and indirect characterization was and all the different types of indirect characterization. So I was real pleased. Um, one of the interesting things about my worksheet, however, was I kind of tried to do it like a jigsaw. That's originally what I had planned. So that literacy strategy that we had talked about, it went wrong. <laughs> it went pretty poorly my second hour. It, I think I needed more structure. That's what I think it really could have benefited from because I had the kids, what I had originally planned 
was to break the kids into groups, give them each a character, and then do indirect, like find examples in the text of indirect, indirect characterization. But when I was talking to went my CT, she's like, you know, just have them pick a character instead, like whichever character that they thought. I was like, okay, cool. She knows what's best. So that was my plan. That did not go as well as I wanted because I wanted the kids to be assigned a character and then they could go like write their little things. And then the next day, what I had planned was them make a Facebook page for the character who they had chosen, which I was like, oh, that would be really cool. Then we could do a gallery walk, kind of like how we do at Central when your class. And I was like, that's awesome. I really like that idea. That way the kids know a little bit about one character, or they know a lot about one character, and then they know a little bit about all the rest. And that was something like I could post up in the classroom, which I thought would be super cool. But that didn't really go too well. So second hour was a little rough. Fourth hour, which is my enriched class, which I have stories about them. They're fun. They're they're rough. They're actually a real struggle for me, which I didn't think they would be because, you know, I was in honors and IB classes my whole time in high school. But what can you do? I'm They're going to be the class I'm really going to have to work the most with. And it's exciting. It's very interesting. I'm really excited for this challenge. But my fourth hour did better with it because I guess maybe they're used to less structured activities. I'm not sure. They were pretty cool. Like they were good working independently. My sixth hour and my eighth hour. Well, actually before I taught my sixth hour, my eighth hour, I talked to my CT and I'm like, so what do you think I should do to make this better because I thought second hour crashed and burned fourth hour went decent but I was like I want to make it good I want the kids to know exactly what they need to know about indirect and direct characterization find examples in the book so we ended up just picking one character for my sixth hour and my eighth hour and doing it together as a class kind of like a think aloud which that actually worked super well. I was really pleased with the results for that. The kids were into it. They were on their feet. They, like, I would read aloud, and then the kids would, I'd stop every so often and be like, okay, so in this, you know, couple paragraphs I just read, what do we see about indirect characterization? What do we see about direct characterization? Then maybe I'd feed them, like, one example, and they'd come up with a couple examples. Super proud of that. I was really satisfied with how they worked. If I were to do this lesson again, I think I would, like, just to make it a little bit better, more student-centered, I would have the students read out loud, too, not just me. So that could be something to keep them more focused, more engaged in the reading. So that's something I really liked. And then... So that was actually kind of interesting. And I was talking with my CT, and she's like, you know, don't worry. Me and my co-teacher, they, they're like, we have to change things all the time because you try something, it doesn't work, and you have to improvise. You have to adapt. You have to get past it. And she was like, she thought it was good how I didn't just kind of, you know, freak out about it. So that was cool. And then my third day, I did my... Facebook page idea and this was kind of cool because then we it was really nice I liked this activity because I saw some of the kids who excuse me some of the kids who aren't the most engaged in class get really into it and they were having fun with it they were making funny status updates for characters so that was something I really liked I felt the kids really responded to because it was very engaging. It was something that they could relate to. I prefaced the activity by discussing like what we learn about people from Facebook and about Catfish, that show on MTV, where these people have like online personas. So I'm like, I tried to relate it as much as I could to their own lives, their own stuff that they have going on. And I feel like that was a really good way to ground them 
in the activity, and they really responded to it. I was super happy with that. So I feel like as the three-day teaching progressed, it got better and better. The first day, the first day was, you know, probably the easiest because I was just giving a PowerPoint. But I really preferred the second two days because it was more active, more engaging, definitely more engaging. So, yeah, I've been trying to incorporate literacy strategies like the jigsaw and the think aloud and all that stuff. And it's pretty, like, I like it. It's, the kids really respond to it. But it is kind of hard to incorporate because my CD, my CT is pretty traditional. She spends pretty much the whole class reading or maybe they'll do a PowerPoint. There's not a lot of hands-on activity type stuff for the kids to really get into it. So I guess it's just a little differing. But, you know, I think my lessons went really well. Let's see, what else do I have to say? Yeah, I think that's it. I'm already at <laughs> 11 minutes, so I know this was supposed to be five minutes, but oops. I'm sorry if I rambled. I'm pretty sure I rambled a lot through this, but just kind of, that's the best way to do it, I think, off the top of my head. I have notes written down, but yeah. Oh, this is another interesting thing I wanted to talk about with my kids. We, like, I've been helping my CT kind of plan the exam a little bit, and she's talking about how all the exams now should be skill-based rather than content based, which is super interesting with all this like TPA stuff that we're doing, I think, because I mean, that's stuff we're expected to know. We're supposed to learn how to analyze and all the Bloom's taxonomy stuff and Costa's questioning stuff. It's not just content. So we're trying to get away from planning test questions that are like, oh, what did Scout do in the third chapter? What did she get for Christmas? That type of thing. We're trying to get kids to go deeper and one of the interesting things that I found I remember in high school like websites like spark notes that's where everyone went when they didn't want to read the book and you could get you know quick little paragraph summaries about all the chapters and then you could answer those simple questions like what did scout get for Christmas you know on a quiz if it happened but my CT told the kids we use on the third day of my lesson, actually, we used a website called Schmoop, which I had actually just heard about this year, and super interesting. I think it's a really good resource for all us English people, because it has a lot of, like, canonical works and a lot of like, YA stuff, which is super cool, but it has, like, character summaries, and it's like a SparkNote-type website, but my CT was, like, Yes. Kids, go out and read this. If you are having trouble getting through the book or if you read it and not sure what's going on or if you weren't in class the day when we read, read the summaries and figure it out. And I was like, oh, wow, because I remember being in high school and that was so taboo. It was something that we were not supposed to do. But she's like, that stuff isn't going to help you on the test. Knowing, you know, little plot details isn't going to help you ace the test. Those aren't the questions we're going to ask. We're going to ask, how did those little plot details or how did those little elements of characterization, you know, affect the work as a whole? Which I'm like, that is super interesting. I think that is a great step forward. And it's nice to bring in those other, like, technology elements for the kids. So I think that's where I'll leave you. I'm almost at 15 minutes now, taking up enough of your time, Mr. D. But yes, thank you. You have a good one. Bye.